Hi, everybody. I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, we're attempting to do this today without my usual tech support that I have sometimes uh, with the Arts Council. Um, and I'm just going to mute everybody for a minute and say hello. Um, I don't think you're able to see my face and I'm having a slight issue with that, but I hope it's all right that you all can just see my workspace. You can see some of the things I'm doing over here and we'll just talk about the art. Uh, thank you for those who are responding in the chat. That's very helpful. Um, photo references. So we have Rima and Claudia, uh, my friends and my longtime students, and they are both supporting me today and helping out. Um, when you put questions or something in the chat, um, we may or may not be able to immediately respond, but please bear with us. We are trying to respond to everybody. Um, and I know Rima and Claudia have the chats open and we'll all try and respond and do what we can. I'm gonna unmute them now so that um, uh, you know you can hear them as well. We'll be chatting a little bit about our work and process. Um, so let me show you guys a little bit of that image that was put up on the website and wherever else you may have seen it. <laughs> uh, I, also, I also posted it in the chat as a link. Awesome. The Amazon link. Awesome. Thanks, Rima. Um, and what I want to say a little bit to everybody is that um, the photo references that I've sent everybody is just to give you a sense that you could be very, very open, loose, and playful today. I'm going to show you a couple of small techniques with some of those photo references. I'll tell you which one I'm looking at. I'm going to call them the cacti flower, the... I'm so sorry, I don't know all my flowers really well and I should, really should have looked up. It looks like hollyhocks, but it's not. Maybe Claudia knows, I don't know. The purple mm. dot one. Um, uh, you mean the tall one? Yeah, the tall one. That might be lupine. Lupine, that sounds right to me. And then this other beautiful flower that looks almost like a magnolia center, but I'm not sure. And um, I also like the magic of looking at um, nature photographs. Uh, maybe not always knowing what they are and getting caught up in that, but sort of playfully bringing that into my um, abstracts. So as you can see in some of these images that I've started painting over here, I also have a little color chart um, right here um, that gives you a sense of how I play with my color and see what happens when I mix them. Yeah. Um, all right. A couple of things brushes let me just tell you all the brushes i'm using today just for the the fun of it you do not have to have all these brushes at all but these are some of the brushes i'm using this funky guy i got him really cheap in some store and just look at this it's, it's this beautiful angle um these brushes are sometimes called dagger brushes they're called other things too um a sword liner sometimes uh but it's cut at an angle um, and then you have what they also call the cat's tongue, which is a lovely, look at that beautiful shape, um, or, or an oval pointed also. So I have a couple of those. Um, they make a really neat uh, mark. So for example, let me just show you um, what might be done with this. And I just press it down and I let it go. And it just creates a beautiful little mark. Maybe another one over here. And you just leave that, you know. So that's sort of how you could use the cat's tongue. I also have this, it's a sword liner. Um, this brush has a lovely, lovely angle to it. Um, I personally enjoy using this brush a lot. Um, I'm gonna give you a sense of why so and how I use it. So I might use it by holding it very high up. Like I hold my brush here and I might do some really light marks like this and sort of playfully make marks. I might even do this. Um, some of you uh, may have seen some of these marks in that painting and wondered how. And it's like you press down at an angle and you go up and down and you create these marks. And you might even go in with another color and sort of bleed it in. So for those of you who are very new to watercolors, I want you to please just just don't worry if you're not getting results and rather play with your brushes today. And I promise you, we're going to find a way to connect these shapes and create something along the lines of this image. Um, I want to point out to you, I must have started this image um, somewhere over here. 
Um, and as I played with the marks and did some stuff, I was like, oh, you know, I'm gonna bleed some in here. And then as I was bleeding this, I decided to make these lovely marks over here. Um, and then I put a big wash here and I kind of saw some textured stem perhaps and put that in. And then I must have been looking at some cacti and started doing that. Um, and this is sort of how I respond to music even and paint. Um, this one was done while listening to an amazing piece and actually watching it. Um, it's uh, this amazing uh, Kuchipudi and ballet trained dancer, a really amazing mix of dance forms. Uh, her name is Yamini Kaluri, and she was uh, collaborating, I think it was a residency somewhere in Massachusetts with the amazing violinist um, uh, Vijay Gupta. Um, and the two of them did this phenomenal piece and I was listening to that and painting. And, uh, and since nature is something I observe closely, I tend to carry a lot of those organic shapes with me as I paint. Um, let's see. Uh, let's start getting into this. So first thing is when you look at that, the flower that looks like this, look at this one. Okay, guys, I hope you can kind of see the image. Um, it may be the inside of a magnolia, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to use this big fat brush of mine and I'm going to make a little mark with some yellow ochre and a little bit of a purple, maybe a touch of pink. And I've got a couple of colors up and down this brush here. And here's what happens when I do that. So you see that lovely blurring of uh, marks and paint. Um, that happens because I've got multiple colors going on on the brush. Um, I might even sort of play with that some more. Uh, maybe, ooh, that's some really deep purple I got over there. Uh, when that happens and you're feeling unhappy with the color, you could just dab it with a paper towel, lift it, or you could go in with a little bit of water and sort of lift that or soften it, um, or even just sort of let the brush act like a straw and you can suck up some of the paint. Um, this painting is going to be very fluid, very loose. You're not going to see any beginning, middle and end. You're sort of playfully connecting different parts. Um, let me continue with this uh, magnolia. Um, I'm going to use some burnt sienna with that purple now. Uh, bring that in, see what happens. And when you make these marks, uh, feel free to, to improvise. Feel free to say, okay, you know, I don't know if this color works. Go back in, bleed some color in, maybe make another shape here, um, another one there. Just play with these. Like as I'm doing this, like I want to imagine that I've never painted before and I'm thinking what would happen if I took some purple and did these little thin lines here because this flower has some really lovely thin lines. Um, you can even take a very thin brush to create those lines if you feel nervous about doing it with a thick brush. So let's see if I can simulate some of those lovely lines. Let's see. Uh, yeah, something like that. Now, as you can see, this does not look exactly like that flower, but it does start to feel like you've taken inspiration from this flower and you've made something from it. Um, and now I'm going to use a little bit of some greens that I have. Now you might wonder what color, how is she just picking up these colors? Well, let's say you have a very basic paint box. For those of you who have painted before, I'm sure you have a system or you kind of know what I'm doing already. But for those of you who are absolutely brand new to this, um, please think of it as your handwriting. So you see how when you write and you have a personal handwriting, you don't question it. Maybe you want to change it someday, but <laughs> for the most part, you don't question it. You're like, okay, this is how I write. And you write, and as long as it's legible and it is something that you know communicates clearly, it works. In a similar way, use your paintbrushes and find your personal language. So if you uh, use a color, and even with the colors is what I wanted to say. Let's say you feel like you look at that magnolia and you really want to match that pale pink and you take your time and you find that particular color and you test the color over here, um, that's fine too. Or maybe you're a bit like me and you very quickly just put the brush into the paints and say, hey, you know, I'm just gonna take whatever color comes up for me and play with it. Um, that's 
totally fine. So I just want to, I just want to say there's no right way today. Um, maybe consider a couple of things that if you want to keep some sort of uh, control over the image, um, you could do things in a way where you keep enough white space between the different experimental elements that you create today. When you have white space, you get to have this advantage, and I'll show you how that works. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take, uh, let's see, let's see, uh, a slightly big cat stung or pointed oval wash. And I'm going to go in with a little bit of this lovely pale blue purple color that I have. And I'm just going to sort of put in some. Um, yes, yeah, somebody asked if there's a recording of this later. And absolutely, there is a recording. And that's why it said right in the beginning um, that it was recording. I believe um, the Arts Council, in about a day or so, puts it up on their um, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you'll see my past recordings too over there. Uh, guys, do you see how I'm connecting these two shades? There's a little green flowery thing. And I'm going to enhance him a little bit so you can see him. I'm actually going to make it a little feathery flower. So it's got like little feathery marks all around it. I believe the painting that uh, Hema's doing right now is just um, kind of an example of what you're going to be, techniques you're going to be using. Correct, Hema? Uh, yes and no, because, um, so uh, Rima makes a good point. I didn't quite explain that. Um, but I wanted to say that I'm creating all these different marks and I'm going to show you how today we're going to connect this and this is going to become a painting. Yeah, so uh, because I know in the interest of time, we may not be able to produce a whole nother piece, but the reason I chose this, abstract image, and I'm going to take you back to the same image, is to give everybody a sense of confidence that you can just start playing. And as you play, you can connect different shapes, see where it goes. Um, I promise you, when I created this painting, I was listening to music, watching Yamini Kaluri dance, and painting. That's it. Um, whatever came up was almost like the natural handwriting that has come to me because of how much observation I do in nature. And so those shapes and forms just come to me. But I know I looked up a cacti while I was doing this one. But some reason, cacti kept coming up for me as I watched them perform. I'm not sure. I'm sure Yami and Vijay had nothing to do with cacti. <laughs> but I did. I had something of an inspiration when I was listening to the music. Uh, I also wanted to see some uh, water. And so I had this very fluid marking here that you can see. And some of that. Um, so again, to tie back to what Rima was saying and for everybody's understanding, I'm creating these shapes. I'm leaving white space. I'm going to keep showing you some techniques so different people can get you know, different pieces out of this image and then eventually connect all of them so that it becomes one cohesive piece. And how you do that, I'd rather you didn't worry about it. I'd like everybody to just enjoy painting right now. Um, I know it sounds crazy. It's like, wait, we don't have a plan here? No, we don't. And it's only when you don't have a plan sometimes that you'll really start to be playful. All right, I'm gonna to switch to the next image, which is um, the one of the, I think it was called lupine, um, Claudia was saying, uh, possibly. So I'm gonna just look at the lupine. Um, yeah, Claudia? Hmm? Oh, I thought you said something. No. Okay, um, I have some, um, olive green here, and I'm going to just sort of bleed some yellow into this. And you see how those colors merge? Um, and I know there's a bit more yellow in this um, plant. So I'm picking up a little bit more yellow on my brush. Um, give me a second while I pick it all up. And, and I'm looking at the photo reference, but I'm sort of playfully adding this sort of, uh, do you see these strokes? They are the tip of my brush being pressed down like this and just creating tips, like little, little pointy marks, okay? Um, this too can create an abstract image eventually because they're gonna connect to these other flowers, not in the usual sort of bouquet fashion or other plant with stems, but they're all just gonna create like this fluid abstract image. Um, now those flowers are fairly round. I feel like it's the yellow parts that are pointy. So I'm gonna go in with a slightly different, Brush stroke. Let me see. 
Okay, I'm going to use actually a little round brush that I have, a very tiny one. It's a size six. If you don't have too many brushes and you're using just one or two brushes, don't worry about it. Just, just enjoy the process. Um, because these videos are up for grabs later, you can watch on YouTube and slow it down, etc. Um, you could be creating this, you know, all over again with more brushes the next time. All right, let's get this going, all right? So some of these are going to bleed into the yellow, which I think is just absolutely perfect. Um, and the other little trip, uh, tip that I always have for my students and for everybody and for myself, if you ever see me painting, you and if you actually watched my eyes, you would see that I squint all the time, all the time. And it's only by squinting that I can reduce the amount of information going into my um, eyes so that I can actually focus on what's necessary. So what that means is like, I might notice as I squint that these are actually sort of in a row and I shouldn't mess that form. You know, like these flowers actually are growing these petals or these little flowers in a row. So I should try for that at least. Um, I'm gonna bleed in some more pink. It seems like there should be more pink now. So I'm gonna do a bit of that. Um, some of these flowers are sticking out a bit. There we go. Uh, having done that, I really want to get in some green spaces. And I've been wanting to think about how I can connect them. So here I'm putting down some water, uh, which I'm going to color slightly so you guys can see it. Um, just putting in some water. Um, sometimes when you put plain water like this and you create this a little shape, maybe just think of it as a little shape that's sort of going off into the rest of the drawing, just some kind of a weird shape. Don't don't worry too much about it. Yeah, did you see that? Um, and I'm gonna go in with some some brighter yellow here. So I'm just gonna leak in some yellow. See that? All right. And along with this, we're gonna bring in a little bit of a blue green. So it almost looks like watery, you know, some type of water body color. And let's see if that works. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Now, at this point, it feels like you're a bit out of control. It might even feel like, oh, my God, I don't know what's going to happen with this painting. Um, don't worry too much about that just yet. You're going to find that it's going to keep changing as we paint. Um, one of the nice things that I like to do that I really enjoy doing um, is to take a very thin brush, which I think will have to be this one. Um, take a slightly darker paint. Now, when you come towards where it's really wet here, and if you drag that paint out like this, like so, you get these beautiful thin lines. And that helps you create some of your abstract shapes. So I'm going to create a little feathery, I don't know what this is, but this is going to be a little feathery something over here. See that? Um, let's see if we can bleed in some pinks and see what happens. So if I touch a pink, um, if I charge this area with some pink and I was to make some shapes like so, that's another kind of abstract um, shape happening over there. Now, I know these shapes don't all seem to be working together just yet. Um, so again, I'm just bear with me. We're gonna keep playing. I want you to think of it as a way to just see what happens when you make these marks. Um, as you can also see, I'm not being too particular about which color goes next to which color, but I will say there is some method to the madness. I would not have put a very dark color here because I have a dark color here and here. So I would put a lighter color here. Just think of it like that. For those of you who are thinking more advanced thoughts of like color theory and such, maybe you want to harmonize. Maybe you want a fixed palette of like five colors and you just want to paint for those so that you get a natural sense of harmony in your painting. But for, since we're talking to such a mixed crowd today, I was gonna say, just think in terms of darks and lights, maybe some warm temperatures and some cool temperatures. So as you can see, the blue area is obviously quite cool. So you have a nice warm yellow next to it, something like that. Um, the other thing to think about is the white spaces that I'm leaving in between. So let's just see what happens when I do this and I leave some white spaces mm -hmm. and you see that little thin line? It really makes a big difference when it dries. It's going to look really pretty um, if you leave that. So think of leaving the whites um, like a bit more consciously. Make sure there's plenty of white um, lines. 
Um, if you're going to do something down here, like I am right now, uh, maybe you leave some whites on that side. And I have some tape down here. So this is actually going against the tape. Uh, I like the idea of making something dark here, the base of this um, image, because these yellows are going to butt up against the white. You see, the white tape is eventually going to get peeled off. And then that'll create a lovely white um, border. Um, let's see. I'm using the cat's tongue as a sort of like almost uh, like a drawing tool. Um, I often use my brushes as a drawing tool. I find that it's very satisfying um, to create lines with my brushes. So think of playing with your brushes. Do you see that little thing down there? Um, it's all created with just one brush using the edge. This brush has a very nice thin point and a fat point. So it's got these multiple mark making abilities. Now, for those of us who are just working with, say, uh, the humble round, I'm going to use this lovely humble round and just create some more based on um, the cacti image. All right, let's get into the cacti image. I put down some yellow marks here before, and I'd like to show you how I'm going to create that um, cacti. So you see those little, um, I don't know what they are. If somebody knows what they are, please give us a shout out in the chat. It'll be great. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, there will be a recording, guys. And uh, what are the other questions here? Are we creating the painting right now? Or is she just showing techniques that you? Oh, I think Bima must have been responding to that. Sorry, and uh, thank you for the question. Um, again, this is the painting. It's all going to connect and become a painting. We have one hour, folks, and there's different levels of people in this one hour, um, all enjoying it together. Uh, I'm trying to maximize and give you all something to work with and connect those dots. Um, in this painting, let me point out that before I go back to the round brush, um, I am sure all of you saw the image already. It's not really one connected huge painting, but it just works for me, at least it does. I hope you are all inspired by it too, but um, you'll find your own language in your abstract art. I love all the little bits of white. I like how all the colors mingle. Um, I don't mind that there's more pink on one side and yellow somewhere else. I think part of the beauty of abstract paintings is that there's an unpredictability to it. And that can really uh, give us some amazing um, results, unexpected results. Things that we, you know, we're like, I don't know, what is this? And then when you paint it, you're like, oh, that looks kind of nice. So um, just play along. Um, here's another one. I'm going to create this with like sort of, I'm sure you guys have heard of the word one stroke. Well, this is not quite one stroke, but maybe two stroke. And I'm just going to show you how the humble round brush can help you create these beautiful little, uh, I don't know, these seed pod like shapes or whatever. I'm mixing some burnt sienna and some deep, deep violet that I have. Um, it's a beautiful violet, it's very rich. So it almost creates a black like color. I'm going to bring this closer so you guys can see the color effect. There is burnt sienna in there, guys. It's a little dark, maybe. But hopefully, uh -huh. colors will come through. Let me see if I can show you a lighter part. Um, there we go. I wonder if you can see that. That's a bit more burnt sienna. Uh, a little more burnt sienna there. And I'm leaving that little white line in between, but I'm creating a shape, as you can see. So that entire little seed pod got created um, just by looking at each little seed pod and imagining a white line in between them. Does that make sense? Yeah, it just sort of like brings um, the seed pod together, but the white lines will remain. I'm not going to take them away. Yeah. Now I'm going to pretend like there's some little yellow thing. I see something on the top of the seed pod. I can't quite make out, but I'm going to put in a tiny little dot like structure there maybe even fan it out just a bit as though there's something blooming from the center. I kind of like that effect, so I'm gonna leave that. Um, let's look at that cacti flower. I have some yellows here. If you have like a burnt sienna and a yellow, that should be enough to create some color variation. Um, I'm gonna create the center here of this interesting, um, what is it? I don't know, cacti flower. I know I was supposed to know the name. I think it's called a choya. It's called Choy, like C-H-O-Y-A. If anybody knows the name, please, please tell us. I feel quite uh, silly not knowing it exactly, but I believe it's a Choya. And I just saw them in um, New Mexico at Albuquerque um, when I was on a trip there and I just fell in love with this plant. 
Um, it's got a very interesting stem and the stem actually makes it feel like uh, when it dries, uh, the stem is actually hollow. It's really quite beautiful. Um, let's see, get some yellow, maybe a warm yellow, like so maybe a bit of ochre mixed in. And you get this beautiful, almost opaque yellow here. Any questions that I'm not getting? Um, let's see, what brush is that? Maybe an Okotillo cactus. Maybe, maybe. Um, I think it was a Choya, but yeah, you're right. It could be something else. And I will, I will go with that. Um, here, I want some of this bright yellow to leak in so that there's a sense of darkness where that um, inside is. And for that, I need to sort of bleed this in. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, and we might even create a shape on the outside with some green even. Just sort of bring that in as though there's um, something else outside there. And I'm going to put some details there. Maybe some more here. Let's see. Yeah, you see how I'm sort of playfully painting a negative shape here? And I'm not going to bother too much with exactly where the stem is and all of that. I'm just going to paint it as though I've got multiple things going on um, around it. And if some of the paint bleeds, don't worry about it. Just let it go. It's okay. Yeah, there we go. Some negative painting to create that um, cacti shape. Um, I think we need a bit more of a of another sort of, um, I don't know what those things are, but it's sort of like the bulbous part of the flower. And I'm just going to create some shapes there so that we have that. Um, I'd like to create one more slightly uh, bigger shape just to go back into the abstraction. Uh, and I'm going to take some of my lovely, uh, I think it's ultramarine blue that I have with a little bit of um, some interesting sap green that I have going on here. Um, and I'm going to bring it into this part and just sort of play for a bit. So sometimes I find that... Hey, Mom. Yeah, go ahead. Some, someone asked, how do you get two colors on the brush without the colors bleeding together? Oh, beautiful. Great question. Um, all right. I, it's best to start testing it with a big brush like this. This brush, you can see it next to my finger, um, is you know like a good inch long. And it's got a nice big angle. And I'm going to show you in a test over here on the side uh, where I'm going to take a very distinct color like red on the front and some, let's see, what should I do? I'm going to take some green on the back. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that it's, it's like this, see? Now, when you say not mixing it, uh, whoever asked that question, um, if you meant on the same brush like so, like the way I'm doing it right now, then I hope this answers your question. But if your other part of the question is something like, how do I make sure they do not mix with each other? Um, I would say it depends on the thickness of the paint. So for example, I'm using a very dense green here and a slightly more liquid red. And the dense green won't just um, jump in and mix with the red immediately mm -hmm. because the amount of water in each is different. Uh, when the water levels match, they tend to immediately merge with each other. Um, let me give you another. All right, let me see that. How do you get two colors on the brush without the colors blending? Yeah, uh, that's one way. The other way is to also create um, like a distinct color difference. So like if you were to take yellow, and I'm going to show you that just now, and take purple on the back. Yep. I did not get it wet enough. Hang on. So you see how this is merging? Uh, that's because the amount of liquid in um, the paints that I picked up was almost the same. So whichever was stronger just sort of merged. Whereas the green and the red really is making a beautiful effect. Um, to understand this, you also need to understand a little bit about tea, milk, and honey. Um, and I'm going to show you really quick what I mean. If you just take some pure red, uh, something like a vermilion or something, and you learn to bring it down to its, oops, 
All right, I hope that's clear. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just bring it down to this. So this is what we call a T consistency, okay? And the moment you increase the amount of paint in that, um, in your brush, you bring it to milk consistency. And if you go almost pure pigment with no water almost, or like very little water, you get what we call honey consistency. Uh, I hope you can see the difference. That's tea, milk, honey. And then you can go even further. You can say cream and you can say all kinds of things, uh, make it more interesting. Uh, the idea being that in a, in a mug of tea, we generally have more water, uh, which is the tea or the decoction, and then you have less cream and then even less honey, usually. <laughs> so um, that's how painting and watercolor uh, generally comes about, which is you have your paler washes, your lighter tea consistency um, uh, marks. And then you come in with your milk, which is slightly thicker, and then the honey, which are the darkest. Um, that doesn't quite apply to what we're doing today because it's such an abstract image um, that you may not uh, see that really unfolding in that way. Uh, but it does still apply. So for example, right now I'm creating this very general, um, simple, some kind of leafy green marks as though there's a whole bunch of foliage, let's say, happening. And I also wanted to get in some yellow here. I just felt like it'd be nice to pop this area and sort of bring in some of this. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with this brush. Uh, but I had promised you that I would do some with just the regular brush as well. And that's this round one. So I'm now going to go in with a little bit of the a nice deep forest screen that I have here. Um, and I'm going to show you how we could even make some of these marks with just this brush. So I'm pressing the brush down. Okay, you see how I made that with just the round brush. Then I'm going to bring some yellow on my same on the same brush, okay? Going into the same area and sort of playfully doing this. You see that? So what that does is even with this humble round brush, you can create some very pretty marks. Uh, by the way, I seem to have lost the, the depth there in the, in the tops, but I can put that back in. I can actually go back in, take some honey consistency and sort of bleed that back in. Um, you may notice that some of my colors are a bit stronger because of the camera up here and the lighting. Um, I will be posting this image um, probably tomorrow. So you'll get to see it. Uh, we're at 7.33 and it's about time to show you one or two more images so that I can, let's see, let's go back to the, um, the lovely little uh, magnolia flower. Um, this time I'm taking a little bit of dark crimson, uh, which again, I'm using just my humble round brush here with a nice point. And I'm gonna create some of those shapes that are in there. Um, this is another part of abstract painting that I love, which is that you can actually create these beautiful uh, detail marks on top of these very abstract shapes. So I hope you guys can see this and appreciate um, how these little sharp. Hey, Ma, what colors are you using? Um, Yes, to add a different add color to different sections of the brush. Um, Jean, yes, uh, you were correct. And uh, uh, Claudia, you're asking me about which um, color for the markings that you're just making now. Oh, I used crimson. Crimson? I used crimson. Yes, it's like a deep carmine crimson kind of a color. Oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. because it's over the um, olive, whatever the little green patch that I had on the bottom, mm -hmm. it looks kind of strange. So guys, that's the other thing in watercolor, you're going to be glazing a lot. So um, for those of you who may have noticed, if you have a dry area, say in this one, this flower I did before um, the session started, I'm going to just put in some dots here. And then I'm going to draw these some lines like this. And this is like, I'm glazing a color on top. And let's say I wanted to add a petal or two and I do this, you can now see a, a bit of the color underneath, but you can also see the color on top. So you end up creating like this dual color effect. Uh, mm -hmm. so in watercolor, you can really play around with that. Sorry, you had a question? No, no, I just, it's a little um, um, fuzzy right now. 
Yeah, yeah, trying to get it back, trying to get it back. Come on, camera. Okay. Okay, I thought we had it. I thought it was working really well for a while. Wasn't it was, it, it was, it, well, there was no problem until just now. Okay, All right. Hey, Ma, while you were um, trying to figure out your the, the Zoom part, could you take your brush and show specifically on your palette how you put two colors on one brush? Oh, okay, let's do it. Um, we'll do it on this one. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it on this one. Okay, I think this should come into focus fairly quickly because it's closer. Um, let's get two colors going. Um. All right, I'm going to use some burnt sienna on one end. So that's this color here. Okay. Just uh, I'm taking picking it up from my palette of colors, which looks like so. And I just picked up some burnt sienna. Okay. Um, and now that everything is nice and sharp, I don't want to lose it. I'm going to put this down here. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, that's your lovely thick burnt sienna. Now the back end, which is that end of the brush, I'm going to dip that in the purple that I had in my palette. And so when I make a mark now, I get this, okay? Uh, I'm going to pick up a bit more burnt sienna, and let's see if we can rock this. I'm going to pick up a little bit of water, um, and I want to make some, I want to connect this painting now a little bit so that it can create some interesting shapes. All right, let's see. Let's pretend like there's something coming down this way. Do you see, do you guys see that? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and yes. then again, again, let's do that again so that we can really play with that. So as you can see, there, there's these, I don't know, maybe these are like old leaves that are sitting on top or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you see those marks, uh, that's possible because of the two different colors sitting on two different parts of the brush, not too much water, fairly thick paint with, with both colors. So they don't mix too easily, uh, which is awesome. And I'm gonna actually continue on this. I, I like this idea that there's some leafy structure coming over it. Yeah, that's what I like that. Okay, um, to further connect these guys, because I wanna work a little rapidly now and connect our shapes because we haven't had a chance to do that. Um, oh, and guys, whoever asked me about uh, putting colors on different parts of the brushes, uh, let me tell you, it works beautifully on any brush that has an angle like this, but you could do it with a round. And I know I kind of smudged that with my t-shirt, but, um, you know, that still looks kind of interesting. Uh, this angle really helps you keep one color here and one color here. Uh, you could do it with um, a round brush too but it would just be different. Um, the other one that uh, is a really lovely brush to play with, uh, especially in such a painting, uh, which I'm gonna show you right now, is I'm gonna take some blue greens. I have different amounts of varying blue greens on my fan brush here. And I'm gonna sort of decide that somewhere in here is this, is this um, sort of feathery region. I'm using it very lightly, and uh, I know you can't quite see my hands, but they are moving very lightly. I'm, I'm not, I'm not forcing the brush. I'm sort of letting the brush sort of lightly glide over the paper, and maybe some of it comes down here. Maybe some of it goes into this part. Um, oftentimes, connecting shapes um, in a painting, uh, especially an abstract like this. Um, and bringing similar colors down to the other side uh, really helps transform um, the painting and connect different parts that otherwise seem maybe very uh, disparate or you know disconnected, etc. Um, let me see. There's another one thing that I wanted to do, which was like in terms of the flow of this painting. As you can see, there's like some action there. There's action flowing this way. I'm not quite sure I love this. So I want some kind of a dark depth there. And I'm thinking, what if there's these feathery things coming out from here? And you see how, like, this is a very playful decision. This is not a decision that I could have thought about and been very sure about, uh, but I don't know, we'll see. 
We'll see. Uh, and believe me, I've thrown away many paintings. So if you're doing this for the first time, just, just go along with it. Play with it. See if this is something that um, is producing um, an image that you might keep. Or would it be an image that you just... Yeah, there we go. Here. Okay. All right. Now, when I look at this painting, the part that does not feel very good to me is this part. Okay, this is getting a little advanced, but I think you guys will appreciate this. Anybody um, who's looking at this painting will have their favorite parts and their not so favorite parts. I love this area. I love this area. I love the way this little flower guy came out. I'm not so sure about this strange conical effect here. Um, and so I'm going to let him be right now. Um, trust me, turn your painting upside down and look at it. And it just looks like a whole different painting. And it gives you a perspective on it that you otherwise would not have had. Now, normally when you're doing a landscape or whatever, you know, usually you wouldn't be turning your painting upside down unless you're doing a wash or, you know, something very specific. Oh, um, is the paper hard pressed? No, it's not. It's just cold pressed paper, uh, but it's a new Saunders paper I think I got. And, oh no, this was Arches, I'm sorry. Uh, my Saunders is not unpacked. Um, this is Arches cold press. No, it's not um, hard press, but it is not a super textured um, cold press. It's, it's a very standard Arches. I try to use this so that I'm not using very fancy paper. Um, just a standard cold press arches, okay? Uh, I want to bring and tie in some of this burnt sienna over here. So I've kind of decided that I'm going to do these lines here, um, and I'll show you how. So I'm using my, um, my. Uh, I think this is also called um, a dagger brush, but it's also called mm -hmm. a sword liner. Uh, guys, what is the other, there's another name for this brush. I often, like, I call it the dagger, but... Do you guys have another name for this, Rima? Um, I don't. Sword or dagger? I think so. Yeah, I think sword or dagger is right. Yeah, I think those are the two that I think of. So I like these marks over here. They kind of frame the green petals a little better. And they bring in some of that burnt sienna we have over there, over here. Um, that's another way to balance the painting. Bring the same colors over to another side. Um, this painting already looks pretty interesting to me. I like the temperature balance between the warms. Uh, the warm colors and the cool colors. Um, I do love this pinkish, a uh, little leak of pink that we have in there, and I'd love to bring some of that in. So I wonder, in order for this white space over here with the tape, um, I'm wondering, what if I brought in a very pale, pale wash? So I'm just bringing in some water here. I know you guys will see some of it leak into and it's kind of pretty to let paint leak, guys. So don't be don't be scared of letting paint leak, especially in abstract. And if you ever want to pick up some of that paint, it's too much, let's say, you damp, you um, sort of uh, blot your brush so you don't have too much water and let it act like a straw and just put it down until it sucks up whatever area you don't want, okay? Just pick it up. And that can be very easy to do, um, very easy to achieve. Um, let's say I'm going to take a little bit of this pink red thing that I want and I'm going to bleed it in. So just going to put in a little bit and just let it bleed. Um, and as it bleeds, it creates its own. Now I want some texture here. Whenever you look at these shapes that I'm creating, I try, don't, I'm not always successful, but I try that the, the forms of the brushes, the shapes, the outer edges are actually interesting. Uh, because if they're not, uh, you're going to see them. Once they're dry, it's not going to be fun. So uh, it's a good idea to consider um, the shape. So I want some jagged edges here a little bit. There's a lot of smooth stuff going on. So let's get some little crispness going there. Um, and if, if it feels like too much, you can take some clean water and just soften the edges here. By now, your paint water may have gotten a little muddy. Uh, <laughs> huh? It is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, if it is, uh, just be aware. Like, you know, please pick up some clean water on the side if you have some more. Or just be aware that if you're going to use yellow or something, it may, it may cause. Now, I'm going to turn this around once again. So I do this often so I can see where I'm going with something. And I want to see if I like it, don't like it. Um, sometimes I like to blot off the edges just a bit to see if I have 
other shapes that might happen that I like. And I think it is, it's, it's better for having been blotted a little bit and having some sort of a very soft effect going on over there. Um, something similar over here so that I can soften these edges. Um, and for that, I'm just gonna brush on a little bit of water and again, go in a little bit of the pink, but also a little bit of this blue green, um, purpley color. And so I'll bleed in this so that these petals are not so, I don't know, with such sharp edges. So I just want to sort of pop that out a bit. Um, I feel like a little bit of the blue green will help. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I like the way this is leaking in a little bit. So we'll leave that there for now. Uh, let's see. And as that bleeds and gets a little murkier, you see how this one bloom is sort of now producing more connections. Um, and I think it's better for it. I, I didn't. Uh, I also don't like this particular shape sitting here. It doesn't do anything for me. So I may change that. Uh, one of the ways I change shapes is also, like I told you before, I might draw some lines into it or Let's see, in this case, I think I want to bring in some yellow pinks. And I'm going to bring in some yellow pinks here and maybe, maybe just sort of create some tiny little, like as though there's a flower tucked away behind, and then one over here so that there's another one. Maybe it's multiple, multiple little things living in there. Not quite sure, but it's in there. Um, and with the green and the blue, I'm gonna go in and create. Um, so this is another technique that you guys can use and have some fun with. Um, wherever you have a really nice damp area, um, you could go in and just leak in some, let's say some texture. You wanna make some texture? You can leak some honey consistency paint and let this, create a lovely little texture there. We're not quite sure what that is, uh, but I love the idea that in nature, there's so much texture um, that you can just bring that in and let it become a whole nother element in your painting. Okay, are you seeing this sort of coming together? I think it's sort of coming together. We're now at 7.50. Um, I'm wondering if anybody else has any questions that I can answer. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions, so I think we're good. Um, I wonder how everybody's doing, and uh, if you feel like this is working for you, I hope some of it has brought about some playfulness in your painting and connecting things in a way that may not have been, you know, consciously possible, but now you trust maybe a little bit more and I'm like, all right, I can I can create something without knowing what it's going to become. Um, here, I'm gonna create some thin lines now. Um, I often go in with thin lines when I start to feel like um, I need to tie the painting together a little bit. Uh, the thin lines draw our eyes to, um, like to focus, to, to bring in some, so here, for example, here, I'll just, I'll do like a random petal shape and you see that? That creates like this illusion of, say, a flower. Um, what else would I like? Ideally, I really want to soft, I, this area that's very beautiful and soft, I feel like needs the same treatment as the, the thing that we did up there um, on the top right. And I'm gonna put in some honey consistency blobs of paint and just let it sit there and leak into this flower. So it's sort of bursting forth with even more, like just interesting points. And when it dries, it becomes really beautiful. Um, I also wanna use some more sharp lines. Like I was saying, I wanna bring some things into focus. Okay, I'm gonna put in, a stem. Um, and to do this, I have very little paint. 
uh, a nice sharp point, as you can see. And, and you're just creating little curved lines, sort of as though you are, you are curving the lines to match the curvature of the plant. And it just lives there somehow. Uh, maybe there's another little curved stem going this way. Um, maybe a little bit of that stem is peeking out through here. Let's see. I feel like a bit of a stem going through there would be sort of nice. So leak it through the water. There we go, all the way to the edge where the tape is. Um, I'd like to go in with a bit more of that blue green, just a tad. Um, so getting in some green, some blues, and possibly bringing it all the way to the edge, but with really feathery strokes. Um, and I think continuing here so that it sort of connects that corner. Um, and maybe just a little bit is sort of leaking in through there. Um, a lot of the negative shapes uh, really do give us additional um, variations in what we're seeing and it makes it just that much more interesting. So now I have some burnt sienna and I'm gonna see if this requires just a tiny you know, enhancement of that shape it already has. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I might be done with a fan brush and we'll go in. Emma, someone would like to know why the class is so short when you talk about so many techniques. <laughs> All right, uh, great question. There's never enough time. There's never enough time. <laughs> Our classes at the Art Arts Council are three hours long and there's still not enough time. <laughs> um, okay, I'm so sorry, Shana. I would love to give you more time. Um, if you're interested in more of this, uh, please write to me on the site and you know we can talk about this. Um, I've been wanting to offer more online classes, um, like proper paid ones. These are uh, like little free uh, sort of introductions that I'm trying to do so that people will feel hopefully happier about doing watercolors. I've heard so many people tell me that watercolors are the hardest. Um, I don't know, Rima, Claudia, you wanna- They're, they're hard. <laughs> yeah, they were- I can't compare them to oils and acrylics because I haven't done oils and I haven't done acrylics really in a long time. Uh huh. I I hated them in high school and then, <laughs> um, you know, it, it now that I'm doing them and I've finally gotten it, um, you know, after two years of of study with him, I I really feel like it's clicking and um, I'm not scared to ha touch my paintbrush and paint to paper. Um, which I think is a was a huge goal for me. Oh, that's interesting. You you mean like you actually felt uh, nervous, um, or is that is, I'm sorry, like maybe I'm not understanding it perfectly. Yes, yes, I felt nervous even like starting a painting because I would be like I'm gonna mess it up or it's it's so hard I'm not gonna be able to do it. And right. so um, I appreciate the classes because it gives me that confidence to, to try different things and really just get out of my own head. Right, um, yeah, and uh, we do, we, we support, um, I, I think it really helps to see uh, demos, right? I, I think they, would you say the demos are actually more helpful than whatever I speak, you know, it's like the act of seeing it being painted, maybe? Or, Absolutely, yeah. yeah, I would agree. Okay, so let me answer some of these questions. Susan, um, uh, the recordings will be on the Arts Council YouTube channel. So if you put Arts Council of Princeton in YouTube, it should pop up quite easily for you. Um, let's see, uh, next question. Um, you love the demos, yay, and 
<laughs> okay, I'm wondering why this class is so short when you're talking about so many techniques. Um, because it's a free class, Shana, it was just something that I thought would be fun because I've heard so many people say that watercolors are so hard. Um, I just wanted to kind of break that apart. Uh, we don't have to be painting apples and bananas. Uh, we could be just painting whatever. And watercolor is one of the best mediums for abstraction and being playful. I think so, at least. Um, now, how do you make it so that it's not muddy? How do you make it so that you get those multiple color techniques and et cetera? That, that's what the classes are for. Um, Rima and Claudia um, uh, have been taking my classes a long time and they, and, and frankly, they can completely paint independently now. They, they really, what I've seen with my students and all of them is this, they're willing to play, experiment, try techniques. You may or may not get like, you know how in YouTube you have these like, do this, this, and this, and you will get the perfect painting. Well, that's great. And I really value YouTube. I love all of the uh, amazing watercolor um, watercolorists out there sharing their techniques. Um, but I will say that you can find your own language. Um, you can find your own vocabulary in watercolor. It doesn't have to be any one particular technique. You can take all of these techniques and enjoy them. And the class is short, I'm so sorry, but there are classes that I'm giving um, at the Arts Council as well as online, um, hopefully more. And um, yeah, please reach out, Shana. I'd be happy to hey, chat. Yeah. How do you know? How do you know that a painting is done? Aha. <laughs> Aha. Aha. All right, uh, good one. Um, actually, while I'm chatting, I'm gonna remove this um, tape that I have on the edges. Um, it may or may not give you a complete sense of where the painting ends because I don't have, um, pencil markings on this, but I think you'll get a sense of where the edges are because when I take this tape off, all right, let me see. Let me see if I really can see those edges. See that lovely sharp edge over there and over here. Um, when I put a mat on this or when I frame it, now I'm gonna try and frame it within the camera space. Maybe you'll get a sense of how it's framed. Um, the bottom edge of the painting right now is framed in the camera. And so is the right. Okay, so this corner is framed um, in the, and it looks kind of complete to me. It looks playful. There's some white parts left that balance out the rest. Now the right side, frankly, is framed like this. Now look at the bottom right corner, and that's how it's framed. That's a lot of white space. So I may have to go back in and play with that a little bit. Um, so I hope that answers your question that really you can't know um, perfectly. Uh, I would say several things. Uh, stay with your painting. Do not touch it for at least five days. Uh, come back to it. Play with it. Um, see if it's done and maybe put a mat around it or take a photograph, crop it. And when you see the edges on that against, say, a black window, um, you'll know. You'll, you'll be like, oh, I like the negative spaces. I like the white or I don't like it. Okay. Um, that's another way to know about uh, finishing a painting. Um, Oh, you're very welcome, Cindy. Uh, Anne asked, will, will we leave the black, the blank space to the right of the new line? And I didn't, by the way. Um, I sort of filled that in. I wanted this connection, but I love this white space here. I love the white, like, you know, the lighter spaces up here and here. And I think I have some lighter spaces here. Um, I will stay with this till tomorrow and then decide if it's, you know, finished. If it's not, I might add a few touches and I'll definitely um crop it correctly and give it to you um so that you can all see it um oh hi cindy okay i i hear you and i see that um fantastic i'm so glad you renew your art membership and wow northwest wisconsin thank you for joining us tonight uh that is so cool <laughs> um uh i'm so glad uh hi nan thank you you're very welcome um all right, I think we've hit the eight o'clock mark and I know uh, if uh, Melissa, who normally helps me from the Arts Council, uh, would have said, time to wrap this up. Yeah, Claudia, Rima, how is it? Do you want to show us your work for a quick second before I shut okay. up? <laughs> sure. Oh my God, there you go. Okay, let me let me quickly spotlight uh, Claudia for a second. Um, replace spotlight? How do I do that? Replace spotlight, there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, yeah, it's so getting much there. Room for <laughs> stuff to do, especially that bottom left hand corner and that lupine. Oh my God, playful, playful. 
All right, time to show Rima. And here's um I have to cut this off. Oh Ooh, my, oh much my better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Great oh, color. So fun. Yeah, I just kind of went nuts. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Anne and um Shelly. Um, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thanks, Susan. Uh, oh, you joined from New York, Deborah. Oh, Deborah, hi. All right, all right. I'm saying hi to everybody, and I really <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. Uh, have a beautiful evening, rest of the evening, and uh, take care. And we'll let's do this again. Uh, thank Bye. you, Bye, thank everyone, you, Claudia, so much. Bye. Thank you. See you soon, uh, Ama. Yes. Yep. See you guys soon. Yeah, next week. Yep. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you guys. Thank you.